we are going to be talking about three brands that I am loyal to and three brands that I am not loyal to. So I first saw this concept done by Melissa Gold and she collabed with, I think her name's Miriam. I, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. So if you want to see what brands I am loyal to and what brands that I am not loyal to, then keep on watching. <laughs> If you're new around here, my name is Bettina. I am the makeup enthusiast. This is your go-to channel for all things Aussie beauty. Typically on this channel, I do Australian made and owned beauty reviews, but today we are mixing it up with something a little bit different. So make sure you click the subscribe button down below so you can keep up to date on all the beauty reviews coming your way. I will leave a link down below to Melissa and Miriam's videos so you can go check out there. So we might start with the brands that I am not loyal to so that way we can end on a positive note. The first brand that I I'm not loyal to is MAC Cosmetics. Now MAC Cosmetics has a few things that I like here and there, like I like their Fix Plus. I have quite a extensive collection of their lipsticks, so I think I have about maybe eight or nine of their lipsticks, but it's not really anything that I get excited about. Like back in the day when I first was starting my makeup collection, I had to have every MAC lipstick. I had to try everything from MAC, but over the years I've kind of grown out of that and and MAC to me, it has decent products, but not the best products. And I think that there are brands out there that are hitting, hitting it out of the ballpark a bit better than MAC. And I mean, they have good products, but they release collection after collection after collection after collection. And I just cannot keep up. It's just too much. I can't handle it. Their products are so expensive in Australia. You're looking at like $36 for one lipstick. Their single eyeshadows, I think they're like 20. So they are very expensive expensive in Australia and I don't think they are worth the price tag in Australia so for that reason I am not loyal to MAC. If we had similar prices in Australia to prices that they have in America for example I think a lot more people would tend to purchase from MAC but because of the insane price tags in Australia I think that is why they don't get as much business from Australian beauty lovers than they probably would do if they were of a cheaper price range. Brand number two is Bobbi Brown. Now I have a few things from Bobbi Brown and once again I feel like back in the day Bobbi Brown was one of those brands that you had to have. Like you weren't a YouTuber unless you had Bobbi Brown, those shimmer bricks, the Bobbi Brown shimmer bricks. If you didn't have a shimmer brick in your collection, like you were not a beauty enthusiast. You had to have a shimmer brick in your collection. Since having purchased a few of Bobbi Brown's products, I've realized that they're not really that great. They're not all that it's cracked up to be the youtubers back in the day that would sing the praises of bobby brown i don't know <laughs> i don't know what they were thinking i feel like because of the whole industry change and as it's evolving and things are getting better and expectations are getting higher brands like bobby brown really need to up their game if they're going to continue to be like a prestige brand in this day and age because what they have on offer it just really isn't all that special like it's just not all that special the palettes that they come out with are pretty poor in my opinion the color payoff and the quality it's not really anything that I gravitate towards I feel like Bobbi Brown is a very older age preferred makeup brand because they do have the more subtle colors they do have the colors that don't have as much color payoff or, or as much impact so you can get that nice wash of color across the lid but for somebody like me that likes a uh, like a pack or a pal with their their makeup and I want to make an impression if I'm going to go to all the all the hassle of doing a full face of makeup I want something to stand out from the crowd so Bobbi Brown's not really on my radar my third brand that I am not loyal to is Benefit Benefit I mean I have some event Benefit's products I have a few of their blushes I think their blushes are quite nice I have their Hula Bronzer. I think it's all right. I don't think it's anything revolutionary though. And uh, I haven't tried any of their new or their repackaged, reformulated eyebrow products, but it's not really a brand that I want to support or give my money to. If you saw my video of the worst ads of 2017, Benefit was featured quite heavy in that ad. And I think Benefit 
like someone at Benefit really needs to get their priorities straight. The way they advertise their products is just really offensive and I find it really inappropriate the way they try and advertise some of their products and for that reason they are one of the brands that I'm really not loyal to. I really think they need to start promoting their products in a more empowering way and it's not that hard to do. There's a lot of brands out there that um, know the line and don't have to cross it but Benefit just seems to dance on that line and just can't really understand the the whole premise behind women using makeup. They just can't understand how to advertise makeup properly. They just always seem to somehow find some way to offend women with their advertising, even though women are their main market. I have two more brands that get just a little dishonorable mention and that is Maybelline and Too Faced. Maybelline it just is a brand that never really grabs my attention. When I'm walking through Priceline it's always kind of the brand that I just slightly glimpse at but keep walking. It never really has anything that draws my eye. Too Faced just I don't know a little bit similar to Benefit they bring out ridiculous products like the glow job mask like what on earth were they thinking Too Faced just does my head in with the way they package their palettes and they bring out these products that they think are really funny but in actual fact it's quite offensive and it's really inappropriate so that is why they are on my not loyal list I do have certain products from Too Faced but it's never really something that I have to buy the full collection of moving on to brands that I am loyal to number one on the list is Inglot I love Inglot. I have an Inglot Freedom System palette. I have pretty much almost the whole entire range of the Inglot pigments. The pigments are fantastic. I am wearing the pigments on my eyes today. They have a product called Duraline which you can mix with the pigments which is what I've done today to make an eyeliner, cream eyeshadows or liquid eyeshadows. They have some phenomenal products. They have a huge range of colors and products that you can mix, mix and match. They are just a great brand and I would highly recommend you checking them out if you can. Inglot though, the only problem in Australia, they have I think two stores in Queensland and they only have a few stores really in each state. So that is one of the drawbacks of being able to buy from them. Brand number two that I am loyal to is Juvia's Place. I almost have every palette that Juvia's Place have made. I just think that their color payoff is phenomenal. The formula is fantastic. I just think because they are marketed for a darker skin, it is a black owned makeup brand. So because of that, they have put a whole lot more effort into the formula and the color payoff because their products are designed for a darker complexion and for them to show up on a darker complexion that is why you get the awesome payoff that you do with Juvia's Place. Brand number three is Colourpop. Now I have a few Colourpop eyeshadow palettes. I have some of their brushes which are fantastic. I also have some of their Super Shock shadows which I'm not the biggest fan of. Purely just for convenience I always feel get to use them. I have some of their blushes and their highlighters so they're a great brand to check out. I also have a crap ton of their lippy sticks. I love their lippy sticks so Colourpop is always a brand on my radar. They're always a brand that I kind of drift towards if I'm wanting to find a interesting color or try something else. Like if you want an eyeliner in a bright color you can check out Colourpop because they're super cheap. For that reason that's why I like Colourpop because they are super cheap and they have a huge range of products so you can kind of mix and match, grab a few of each and still not have broken the bank. I have two honorable mentions for my brands that I am loyal to and that is Bare Minerals and CoverGirl. Bare Minerals, I love their eyeshadow formula. They have great matte liquid lipsticks. Their Gen Nude Matte liquid lipstick formula is amazing. It's really comfortable on the lips. It doesn't dry your lips out overly because I have super dry lips as it is. So I don't need anything else to dry my lips out. And lastly, CoverGirl, I just love their foundations. 
I haven't found a foundation so far that I've tried from CoverGirl that I haven't liked or I haven't enjoyed. So they are on my loyal list for foundations. I just absolutely love their foundations. And I think if you have oily skin, they have a great range of foundations for you. And I think you should really check them out if you haven't already. Those are my three brands that I am loyal to and my three brands that I am not loyal to, as well as some honorable and some dishonorable mentions in there. Let me know down in the comments box if you enjoy products from any of these brands, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you like me doing these kind of chatty videos. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below so you keep up to date on all things Aussie beauty. That's it for this video, everyone, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.